taking over as GM of the Washington oh my gosh. Commander. And this video can't end until we hoist the Lombardi Trophy. The Commanders have a 76 overall offense with an 84 defense, and they don't have a lot of money to work with. And when you look at this roster, you realize this might be one of the hardest rebuilds we can do. The shining star of our offense is Scary Terry McLaurin. He is an excellent wide receiver, superstar X Factor, and he still has room to progress, but he's not fresh out of college either. We also have Brian Robinson, very young, and he got shot twice and is still playing NFL football, so this guy's a dog. Curtis Samuel is a solid depth wide receiver, but he is normal dev. Luckily, we also have Jahan Dotson. I think he has a really bright future on this rebuild. He's fast, he's got great acceleration, he's only 23, and he's already a 77 overall. He's on the verge of going up to 78. He's gonna be a good wide receiver for this team for a long time. I think the scariest thing that I see when I look at this team is the offensive line. Absolutely pitiful. The interior averages a 68 overall. Sam Cosme is no good. Charles Leno is the brightest player and he's normal dev 82 overall. We've got a quarterback at tight end. It's just offense is just pitiful. Defensively though, I have a lot to look forward to on this rebuild. We have one of the very best D tackles in football in Jonathan Allen. He's a superstar X factor. He's probably got three solid years left before he starts to really regress. If there's one thing that holds this entire unit together though, it is right here. Chase Young will be a 99 overall superstar X factor. We just have to keep him on this team and he will wreak havoc. He's already at 85 overall and a superstar at only the age of 24. He's 87 speed, 91 acceleration. I can literally promise he will be an X-Factor demon. So I'm really happy that we at least have Chase Young. Not to mention Montez Sweat is actually a very similar player. He is 26, but he's stupid fast, like stupid fast. If we can start to get him some stats and some progression, he realistically could get to superstar, maybe superstar X-Factor. And to be honest with you, can't forget about the rookie. The commander drafted Emmanuel Forbes. He's hidden dev. Obviously, he's going to continue to be really, really good. But the best thing about Emmanuel Forbes is he's 94 speed, 95 acceleration. You could have the best corner ever, but if they have 89 speed, they're never going to really get much faster and you're just, you're kind of screwed. You could have 99 in every stat, but if you got 89 speed, I'm not taking you. We have an absolute sleeper of a linebacker in Benjamin St. Just. I don't know if that's how you say this name, but this guy, he may be a normal dev, but this is a six foot three corner. As far as sleeper players go, Benjamin St. Juice is actually really, really good. Kendall Fuller, a great corner, but I gotta say a lot of this commander's roster is like 26, 27, 28 years old. That's normally not bad, but three years down the line, it's gonna be bad. And this team's not gonna be good this year. So three years down the line is when we're supposed to kind of have it figured out. So I don't know, it's gonna get spooky. There is no question. Cam Curl is excellent and young. He will be a cornerstone of this team for a while, no question. And we've got Jamin Davis as well, 24 years old. It's gonna be a good linebacker for a long time. And now the big question is quarterback. Jacoby Brissett is not getting any better. He's already not that good. To me, it's obvious that we don't keep Jacoby Brissett. Now, one insane thing about this commander's roster is just how much money Curtis Samuel is soaking up. Curtis Samuel is a great wide receiver. I feel bad even thinking about this. But there is no justification for a 27-year-old normal dev 82 overall wide receiver to have a $10 million salary. It's insane. Now, we would have a penalty of $3 million, So rather than releasing Curtis Samuel, I'm gonna see if we can trade him and potentially unload his contract onto somebody else because I don't think we need him. Scary Terry does everything that Curtis Samuel does but better and Jahan Dotson will step into that role that Curtis Samuel has. Sam Howell recently in real life was announced as the commander starter so I do want to do this rebuild with Sam Howell. He's 22. He's normal dev. He's not good at all. In fact he's dog shit but he does have 92 throw power, 87 excel, 82 speed. So I don't know, maybe he can find a way to make this work. I don't know. Before the season starts, I want to trade Curtis Samuel, get that contract off her hands. And I also need to make Sam Howell the starter. Those are my first two big ticket items as GM. So Sam Howell, move to starter. The North Carolina stud. Let's see how that goes. I'm targeting basically a four year window to be a very successful franchise. So I would be willing to part ways with my 2026 first round pick, but we definitely need our picks 
in 24 and 25. I'm going to try and find a trade with our first round in 2026, pretty damn far out, and Curtis Samuel. I'm also including Deron Payne in this deal. We already have Jonathan Allen. It does not make sense to be spending big money on another D tackle when there are so many holes on this team. I found a trade that will hopefully go through. I'm offering Curtis Samuel and Deron Payne to the Falcons, Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is already X-Factor. I think if Sam Howell is going to succeed, he needs somebody like Kyle Pitts, not Logan Thomas. And of course, he'll also have Scary Terry. Now, this clears up a lot of cap space for us, but we obviously lose a stud wide receiver and a stud D tackle. We've got Jonathan Allen. I guess I just don't know if they'll take this. The Falcons team needs our D tackle and wide receiver. They don't seem too interested in Curtis Samuel. I'm just going to send it. Trey, oh my God, they're so close. This offer just isn't going to cut it. We're going to need significantly more compensation, but their interest level is 99%, okay? I'm not willing to part ways with a first round pick. Do you think they would take a poverty pick? Would they take like a third round pick? Let's give him 2026 round three. <laughs> oh my God, I'm the greatest GM of all time. Kyle Pitts to the Commanders. Curtis Samuel, Deron Payne, and a third rounder in 2026. I think on paper, I think we got fleeced because in real life, Kyle Pitts, you know, it really hasn't done that much. That's no hate on Kyle Pitts. I love Kyle Pitts. I think the Falcons just aren't utilizing him. But in Madden, t tell me why Kyle Pitts is a superstar X Factor. I have no idea. I have no idea. He's already got an upgrade. We'll give him vertical threat. Kyle Pitts is 22 and he's an 88 overall. That's insane. So so, and not to mention, he's 91 speed, 90 catching, 93 excel. He's going to be just so unbelievably good. That's a Hall of Fame tight end in the making. Sam Howell's the starter. He's got Brian Robinson, Scary Terry, and we just gave him Kyle Pitts. Jahan Dotson is wide receiver too. And I'm 100% going to use Chiefs Playbook. The reason I'm going to use Chiefs Playbook is Chiefs Playbook utilizes the tight end a ton for obvious reasons, Travis Kelsey. So Kyle Pitts will get a lot of targets. And I think Kyle Pitts will be able to come down with balls that aren't even that good. That's kind of the hope. Like Sam Howell doesn't have the accuracies he needs yet. All right, y'all, that was the only big adjustment I wanted to make. We lose an incredible D tackle in Deron Payne, but guess what? We've got Jonathan Allen. I'm not worried about losing him. It doesn't change that much. Only thing I got to do is make sure all our abilities are what I want them to be. Chase Young, I would very much like you to have edge threat if you can get it. He won't get it till speed rusher. For now, we use inside stuff, no outsiders, and defensive rally. Terry McLaurin, I'm giving him double me. I'm giving him deep out elite. I'm going to give him short in elite. And I am a casual. I did not realize that acrobat was a wide receiver ability this year, but that is awesome. More likely to succeed at an attempt diving catches. That's awesome. So we'll keep that. I'm giving Kyle Pitts tank, red zone threat, and deep out elite. Big moves for the Washington Commanders. Unfortunately, I didn't get us any offensive line help. So I think this will be something we have to target in the draft. Honest to God, if my first and second round pick in the draft were guards, I wouldn't even be mad. We'll most likely have a really good first round pick since our team is so shit. I don't imagine we'll have a very good record this year. Let's advance ourselves to the regular season. I'm going to be ultra concerned conservative with setting my season goal here. I don't expect to be good in year one at all. I'm just gonna say four wins in a 17 game season. I think we can do four wins and hopefully we get one to start out here against the Cardinals. A few players are getting upgrades right out the gates. This is thanks to the preseason. Scary Terry's already got an upgrade. That's awesome. I'm actually gonna give him a playmaker upgrade here. Playmaker usually gives you a ton of stats and it did. Awareness, ball care vision, break tackle. Jeez, yeah. Chase Young up to an 86 overall speed rusher. Getting 90 overall speed rusher gives us edge threat. That is a massive game changer. By the end of this season, I expect him to have it. Can't forget about Cam Curl, man. I'm going to keep hammering home run support. I want Cam Curl to be coughing up fumbles. Eventually, if I can put Crusher and Enforcer on him, assuming he gets a dev trade upgrade. Yeah. And look at that. Jahan Dotson already getting that upgrade. I'll give him playmaker as well. Awareness, break, tackle, catch, juke, medium, and spin. All right, we're simming to midseason. Let's, uh, let's see just how bad the situation is in Washington. You know, I was going to say not a bad start, but I, I'm actually trying to tank. Is that cheating, by the way? As, as a rebuild GM, is it cheating for me to tank? Because technically it's illegal in the NFL to tank, but I swear to God, some of these teams do it, bro. There was a year that I was watching Doug Peterson on the Eagles and I was like, bro, you are intentionally tanking. There's no way. And guess what? Now the Eagles, Super Bowl contenders, whatever, three and four through midseason, just coming off a loss to the Giants. But honestly, Giants, 
Giants are 7-0 and in the NFC East. The Eagles are 7-0. and Cowboys are 5-1. and This is a tough-ass division. We're really going to have to fight to win a Super Bowl. We will be using auto-generated rookies, and I need to start doing some scouting. Something I forgot about is I actually want one of my scouts to be on the interior O-line so I can actually get a grasp on which of these guards is going to be good. I missed that deadline already, which is a bummer. So next year, I have to make sure I grab Logan Mankins because his expertise is interior O-line. That'll give us a better a better look. But for this draft, when I look at the prospects, it's, it's actually kind of a bummer. Number one's a speed rusher left end. Dude, I've got Montez Sweat and Chase Young, so that's not me. Glenn Clemens out of USC looks to be a stud right tackle. I'm probably not going to get the second pick, but even... Even then, he's a tackle. Then it's wide receiver, D-tackle, strong safety, outside linebacker, left end, outside linebacker, DB. So another right tackle in here, Danny Hamilton. I technically could draft one of these guys moving to guard, but that just feels weird. A lot more. There's three tackles right here, but no guards. The two best guards in the draft are 25 and 26. There's even a world where I trade down. There's a world where I trade down and get some talent out of it, hopefully. Mahomes leads the league in passing. Josh Allen, Russell Wilson after him. Oh. Oh my God, Sam Howell. All right, Sam Howell's throwing a lot of interceptions, no doubt. But take a look at this. Sam Howell. Sam Howell is seventh in the league in passing yards. Granted, he has the most attempts. He has thrown the most passes in the entire league. He hasn't even completed that many of them. He's thrown nine interceptions, but holy shit. Yeah, I mean, the top two guys got in a 111. Sam Howell's rocking a 90 QBR though which is better than Kirk Cousins, better than Mac Jones, better than Derek Carr. Jahan Dodson is having a hell of a season with 39 receptions and 482 yards already. Damn, what about Kyle Pitts though? Kyle Pitts, 27 for 322. He's got five touchdowns. He actually is having a pretty good career. Kyle Pitts is taking the touchdowns for sure. Five touchdowns on him. Brian Robinson's got 90 carries for 295 yards. Actually a horrible average yards per carry. Sam Howell is averaging more. All right, we're simming up to the playoffs. I don't imagine we'll make them. And in our very first season, the Washington Commanders. Oh my God. We had it 3 and 14. Holy shit. Wait a minute. We didn't win a single game since midseason. Oh my God. Holy shit. We got blown out by the Cowboys. Holy shit. My season goal was four wins. We didn't fucking get it. I might get fired. Chiefs got the bye. Cowboys got the bye. Uh, no surprise teams in the playoffs, really. The Panthers are the three seed, though. That's impressive. Falcons are the seven seed. Packers made it as the four seed. That, that actually is a little, it's a little surprising. Well, we do have a very good draft pick. I successfully tanked. No one can tell me that I didn't tank. Taking a look back at the 2023 season. The Giants win the Super Bowl. They beat the Broncos. Saquon Barkley's MVP. Jalen Hurts wins MVP of the league. Jonathan Taylor gets Offensive Player of the Year. Micah Defensive. Offensive Rookies Bijan. Defensive Rookies Devin Witherspoon, unfortunately. It's not Emmanuel Forbes. I will say, though, our team appears to have come a very long way. We started the season at 79 overall. We're now in 82. Let's see how everybody developed. Scary Terry McLaurin regressed a dev trait. Luckily, he's still superstar. He retains his ability which is amazing. But damn, Jahan Dotson's gone up and everybody's hurting from morale. Sam Howell is actually up to a 73 overall, which is really good. You can't tell because he's minus three on morale, but he's truly a 73 overall. So good work by Sam Howell. Offensive line looks about as pitiful as I remember. The only good thing is Stromberg, the rookie, is a star center. So he'll be good for a while. Charles Leno looks like he's regressed a little bit. Um, Kyle Pitts is now a 92 overall, but morale's hurting him too. I'm deep. I know! I knew it! I knew it! This guy is such a dog. Chase Young, after one season, is a superstar X Factor, but crazy enough, he's only an 87 overall. He didn't really even go up in overall that much. Oh, wait, no, he's an 89 speed rusher. Morale's taking him down. My bad. He's up to an 89. So he, he must have had a very good season. Jonathan Allen still killing it. Montez Sweat didn't do too much. And my DB core is actually incredible right now. You got Emmanuel Forbes. Kendall Fuller, Cameron Curl. Linebackers are mad, um, but you got two stars over at free safety with uh, Derek Forrest. And Derek Forrest looking pretty good. Year one went about as we expected, but we can make some moves in free agency. We've got 68 mil in cap, but damn, we've got to shell out some money and I'm running out of lighting here. So this might be the last thing I do today. Kyle Pitts, fifth year option. I don't really have a choice but to accept this. We need Kyle Pitts. To Kyle Pitts, fifth year option, we have to negotiate with Chase Young. A 53 million dollar three-year deal the thing is chase young will literally be a 99 overall we have to have him i'm gonna give him a player friendly offer i think i can just give him a neutral offer he'll probably accept it 
I enjoyed playing for you, but I think I'm gonna test out free agency. Are you shitting me? You just said you're fully interested in the squad. Looks like I have to franchise tag Chase Young. Oh my God, I should've gave him player friendly. I should've gone player friendly. One year, $19.2 million contract for Chase Young. I'm going player friendly on Cam Curl. I'm not risking it. Same with Kendall Fuller. I don't even know if we need to retain Montez Sweat. I don't think we do retain Montez Sweat. I'm gonna give him a neutral offer. We'll see if he takes it. Shit, he's staying. Not a lot of cap space though. So at the start of free agency, we paid Chase Young a lot of money. We paid Montez Sweat a lot of money. Same with Kyle Pitts. We had to shell out a lot of money to retain a lot of these players. And Cody Barton, our 79 overall middle linebacker, walked. He wanted 20 mil. He's not getting 20 mil. You're dog shit. But now my linebackers are depleted. So we need to sign a few in free agency. We can pick up Andres Pete for a very slight upgrade to our left guard. Presumably he'll accept this offer. I guess we'll have to see though. And we're going to pick up Chris Barnes at middle linebacker. He's only a 75 overall, but he is 26 years old. So at least hopefully he's got some room to improve. We are broke. God, the Texans rebuild was so much easier. Holy shit. We might have to let... I guess we'll see. We'll see next season. Okay, it's time for the draft. Oh, now we have a huge dilemma with the NFL draft here. I have round one, pick one. Now that's not a dilemma, that's pretty amazing. But is that worth it? Is it worth using my round one, pick one on the best player in the draft? Or do I trade that into a ton of talent? The number one pick, Randy Stevenson, looks like a god. But this is the last thing the commanders need. I have Chase Young, I have Montez Sweat. But oh my god, does this guy look good. He has elite agility, elite change of direction, great excel, Great speed, good jumping, solid strength. A, 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 A power moves, A finesse moves. Hello. But it's like, how can I justify that? How can I take him? I wish I had done a better job actually scouting so that I knew more about him. But how does he have A block shed, A finesse, A power moves, and potentially A tackle as well? I don't want to say it's a generational talent because I don't actually know if it's a generational talent. But holy shit, he looks good. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take him. I'm gonna take this dude, Randy Stevenson. And if he's a god, I'm gonna trade Montez Sweat. We just paid Montez so much money. So it sounds kind of stupid. But if I can unload Montez's contract and have a generational rookie, I'll clear up some space to sign free agents next year. Ooh, this is super weird. I shouldn't have re-signed Montez. Now that I look at this, I should not have re-signed Montez. Round one, pick one. I can trade it away, but I'm not gonna trade it away. Randy Stevenson out of Florida. He has everything. This guy is a, this guy's insane. Spin, arm over, physical, power and leverage to bull rush, a motor, rip the ball from runners, good discipline. Like this guy has to be a demon, right? Randy Stevenson drafted 86 speed, 86 acceleration, 84 agility, 83 strength. He's got hidden dev, obviously. He's probably star or superstar. I, I mean, 86 speed is incredible, but damn, I don't really know much yet. I'm gonna skip to my next pick. I get the first pick of the second round two. A guard or a linebacker are both good picks for me here. I'm gonna take Jake Gibson out of LSU. Six foot seven, his pass block is a guaranteed A. Potentially could move him to guard. His rank did decrease, but we'll see. 78 strength. 76 acceleration. Everything is in Randy Stevenson right now. That is like our whole, our entire franchise is in the hands of Randy Stevenson right now because I could have traded that for a lot. We can pick up a deep ball wide receiver in the third round. Peter Mooney is six foot three out of Clemson and he's been shooting up the draft board, at least from where he was previously. Let's see how he is. His key ratings are bad. Key ratings are bad, but he's 90 speed, 91 excel, six foot three. You can make something happen with a guy like that. No question. And I'm gonna advance to the end of the draft. The rest of these rounds don't mean too much to me. All right, let's take a look at these rookies. Here's our draft recap. It's all about Randy Stevenson. I'm hoping he's a 77 overall or higher. Dude, if he's 77 or 78, he's actually a demon. Looking at our lineup, it looks like we drafted a rookie halfback. Peter Mooney isn't even hidden dev. He's just straight up normal, but I'm happy to move him up in the depth chart. I want to use him. Gibson's a 74. Look at the boy. Gibson is a 74. This was a good pick. He's hidden dev. He's 74. What is he as a guard? I don't know. Does this break the rules of a rebuild? Am I allowed to move my tackle to guard? You guys can let me know, but I'm going to just check it right now. I'm going to move him to right guard. I want to see what that does for his overall. He's a 75 at right guard. He's a 74. At left. He's even better at guard. So in the second round, we get a guard. And in the first round, we hopefully got a stud. Stevenson is an 82. Oh my God. Wait, this guy's a god. Holy shit. Did I get a generational talent? I don't really know what 
it means to get a generational talent. But this dude came out the box 82. He's okay. He's a 6'1 edge rusher, which is so weird. Like that's actually so weird. He is in the top 4% of left ends and I just drafted him. 88 finesse, 86 speed, 86 excel. Montez Sweat is gone. I am not keeping that contract from Montez Sweat. Absolutely not. Holy shit. Wait, that was an insane pick. Looks like we were auto drafted some rookie linebackers, which was a very good call for us. We still got Derek Forrest, Cam Curl, Emmanuel Forbes, and Kendall Fuller. We just have to trade Montez Sweat. I'm going to put Montez Sweat on the trade block. I want to see what teams offer. I am... Holy shit. Holy shit. This is amazing. Yo, this changes everything. That's insane. I wonder what his dev trade is. He's got to be superstar then, right? Year two, I definitely expect more success in year two. I'm actually going to shoot for seven wins. I don't really think we can do it, but I'm going to shoot for seven wins. We're up and overall. We drafted a stud and I'm going to try and trade Montez Sweat right now. Let's see what offers we were given. Montez Sweat is star 27 and 84 overall. So we should get some decent offers for him. The Vikings offered Madison in a sixth round. Suck my dick. Nate Hobbs. It's not a bad offer. Who needs an edge rusher? <sighs> this is a super bizarre trade, but I'm looking to get Jack Campbell off of the Lions for Montez Sweat. I really like Jack Campbell. Jack Campbell is a big middle linebacker. He's young. He can develop. And I need linebackers. I definitely don't need my edge rusher. I don't really know if they'd go for this trade. This also clears up cap space for me. I spent way too much on Montez Sweat and then I drafted a player better than him. That was a mistake. I've got to undo it right here. Lions don't want it at all. But... I could sweeten this deal. What if I add a 2022 second round pick? Ooh, it's close. And 2025 round three? I'm unloading some draft picks right now a lot, but we're getting close to the point. What? Oh my God. Okay, they want one more poverty pick. Okay, I will unload the most poverty pick in 2027. All right, round seven, 2027. Does that move the needle? Fuck. Come on, Jack. I know you want. I know you want a new team, Jack Campbell. 2027 round five. Done deal. Damn. I just gave up. I just gave up a lot for Jack Campbell, but I think it's going to be worth it. Jack Campbell's going to progress. Montez Sweat was literally dead weight on this team. We lose a 2026 second round. That's the biggest thing I'm worried about. I don't care so much about the third or the fifth. Jack Campbell, let's go. We'll be doing auto-generated rookies, and I have to make sure I actually set my scouting this time. I messed that up last time. I'm not going to mess it up again. So here's the prospects for the upcoming draft. QB is not on my radar. I think I'm sticking with Sam Howell. We'll see. Sheldon Tolbert left end. I don't need that. Tackle, maybe, because Charles Leno's getting old. Wide receivers, no. Linebacker, maybe. What about safeties, though? Ja Whitaker, Al Dobbs, Marcellus Kendricks. Right in the middle here are three strong safeties. Oh, I don't really need safety either, do I? I'm going to focus my scouting on linebackers and quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance that I do have to replace Sam Howell. And then on top of that, my linebackers are always going to need help. I did add Jack Campbell, but that's really not that much. My outside linebackers are still not good. We need a QB scout. We need a linebacker scout. I'm going to fire Norris Pope. I'm going to fire Kayla Freeman because she's a woman. I'm going to hire Tamara Park for outside linebacker and safeties because there's a ton of good safeties in this yeah and then my secondary scout can't be john sanders my secondary scout's got to do quarterbacks so i need a two-star that'll do quarterbacks we'll get ross kane for qbs and wide receivers now my best scouts on outside linebackers and my next best scout is on quarterbacks with safety and wide receivers backup that is perfect for this team all right my scouts are assigned i'm looking for quarterbacks outside linebackers with a secondary focus on wide receivers and strong safeties all right we're we're headed to the mid-season of year two. Pretty much can only go up from year one. We had only three wins, but we've now drafted what I think is a generational left end to pair with Chase Young. Dude, if they both end up being amazing, I even could trade one of them and just get a ton of talent. At mid-season, we're two and four. Hey, well, the biggest thing, Sam Howell, he's still only a 76 overall but his dev trait is star. So now I'm thinking I, I probably won't draft somebody over him because he's going to develop pretty quickly as star, a lot faster than normal. Gibson turned out to be a very good draft pick. Star dev, and he's a 78 overall at right guard already. So we've already improved the offensive line. Obviously, Andres Pete and Leno are, and Cosme is a little mad. Kyle Pitts is up to a 96. He's unbelievable. Scary Terry, a 92. Brian Robinson's doing all right. Uh, defensively, we get to... See about, oh my God, oh my God, he, okay. He either was a superstar and already got a dev upgrade to X-Factor, 
But that wouldn't make any sense because he literally would have pretty much just got enough reps to unlock his dev trait. I think we drafted this dude as an X Factor. Holy shit, I actually drafted a generational talent. This is my second ever rebuild and we got an X Factor left end. Oh my God, that's insane. He's got Fear Monger right now. We're gonna give him Unstoppable Force, go Defensive Rally and Mr. Big Stop, I guess. It doesn't really, doesn't mean much yet. Dude, this guy's a beast. Holy shit. Let's go look around the league and see just how well he's doing because I would really like him to get Defensive Rookie of the Year get him some extra juice end of year two we fell just short of our goal but if you take a look right there that is an 87 overall washington commanders team we started at 79 so i'm honestly shocked that we lost as many games as we did the problem is the nfc east is just crazy strong the cowboys are 15 and 2 we play them twice a year the eagles are 10 and 7 the, the giants are 8 and 9 which is whatever but yeah, honestly it's the nfc east that's holding us back at the end of year two let's see what the lineup is looking like damn sam Sam Howell. Sam Howell had a hell of a season. Closed out at an 81 overall. So that's a lot of upgrades for him. Kyle Pitts is damn near a 99. I told you, this, this Kyle Pitts shit is ridiculous. Kyle Pitts almost a 99. Gibson's an 80, which is great. That's a great rookie to have. McLaurin's 94. Dotson's 83. Uh, I think it's Deami Brown is a 77. And then on defense, Randy Stevenson drafted at, at what, what was that? A, an 81 or an 82? Already now an 87. Three superstar X Factors on the D line. We must have the best D line in the league. I just have to imagine we have the best D line in the league. Dude, I have no idea how Randy Stevenson did not win Defensive Rookie of the Year. It went to right end Jamie Jackson. Uh, the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. Mahomes gets another one. The Giants were 8 and 9. The third worst team in the NFC East and the Giants went to the Super Bowl. Jamie Jackson, how did we not win defensive rookie of the year? I guess the good thing is Randy Stevenson's already X Factor, so it doesn't matter if he wins it or not. I'm switching my defensive playbook to New York Jets. Previously, I had it on Denver Broncos. Now, the amazing thing about unloading Cole Barton and Montez Sweat is we have 35 mil in cap, so we can sign a very serious free agent quarterback. 99 overall Joe Burrow is available, but I don't have the money for that. He wants $304 million, so yeah, that's a little out of my wheelhouse. Wyatt Teller is actually possible for us, but 14 mil a year, I just don't need it for 14 mil a year. Unfortunately, our free safety Derek Forrest did walk, but Eddie Jackson's available for not too expensive. He's 82 overall. Obviously, he's older, but this is a really nice depth pickup to get right now, especially going into this third year where we're gonna start to win a lot more games. We won three games season one, six games season two. Do the math. I'm starting to think I need a left tackle, but I don't like this market. There's nobody I'm really interested in here. I actually am. I'm going to pick up Isaiah Wynn here if possible. I'm going to give him a very neutral contract. He's interested in our team. Charles Leno's getting old, man. I have to get ready to replace him. Oh, wait. I was totally right. Charles Leno retired. So we definitely need to pick up a left tackle. Um, And Scary Terry went from superstar down to star. Kind of figured this was going to happen, that he was going to start to continue to regress. But it is what it is, man. We just need a left outside linebacker. But I, I suppose we could draft a left outside linebacker. Linebacker too. What outside linebackers are available? We have a decent amount of cap to sign, buddy. The only good free agent outside linebacker is Odafe Owe, and he wants a bag. I'm going to pick up CJ Mosley for two years. He's only going to get worse, but I'm going to move him to outside linebacker. It's going to be weird. I just really need an outside linebacker. The cap space ended up being really important because in free agency, we were able to shore up a lot. We got Isaiah Wynn for two years, which is a solid fill-in for Charles Leno, who retired. Offensive line is actually starting to progress, not regress, which is pretty cool. Other than Andres Pete, we do pick up CJ Mosley, who I'm going to move to outside linebacker. And Eddie Jackson did agree to sign with us. So I'm happy to have him in there too. CJ Mosley actually gets a slight overall boost at outside linebacker. One thing I can tell you, we have an insane defense here in Washington, an absurd defense, but I just don't know if Sam Howell's going to get it together quick enough for this rebuild to work. We don't have a choice. We got to win a Super Bowl, right? As GM, I had to sleep on my draft decisions, but I have a strategy now. We have round one pick five, and we prioritize quarterback because I thought we might be replacing Sam Howell. Well, guess what? I'm so glad we scouted them. Brett Walker was projected a top five QB. Like, I could have picked him, except he's a round two or three talent. The next highest is day three. After that, it just keeps dropping off. We learned everything about these guys, but there's no good quarterbacks at all. So that's good and bad. I know not to take a quarterback, but what are my next two options? Now, I went ahead and favorited these two guys right here, Sean Yates and Amari Burton. 
Sean Yates is 6'2 out of Ole Miss. I don't have a good scouting report on him, but his catch is an A. His release is an A. Catching traffic is a B. And Terry McLaurin is regressing. We do have Jahan Dotson, but that's it. So I wouldn't mind a wide receiver here. He's probably the best in the draft. And if I can't get him, I still want an outside linebacker. And Amari Burton actually looks really good. He's 6'3 with A block shed potentially, A pursuit guaranteed. I want Sean Yates first. If Sean Yates doesn't fall to me, I'll move to Amari Burton. So I have two very good options. And with round one pick five, I should 100% get at least one of them. I'm going to advance to my pick. Luke Richardson was taken. I have to imagine that both of my selections are available. So now I just have to decide. I've got two minutes to make this decision. So Sean Yates is still in there and so is Amari Burton. And these are the two guys I'm targeting. So this is perfect. Sean Yates, wide receiver. We are one of his top fits. Exceptional body control, fights for every single inch, avoids big hits, climbs the ladder, creating yards, good discipline. But he needs to work on simple concentration drops. I don't like that. His rank did change. He ran a 4.38, so he's probably not that fast. His bench press was first, which is, I guess, interesting. A potential awareness, break tackle carry, and this is kind of like a very physical, big body wide receiver. His injury is an F, but there are no injuries on in this franchise. So kind of scheme that. He's got tons of A's though. Tons of potential A's. Oh, I like him. Amari Burton though. Tons of good player notes. He's 21. Pursuit is A. Solid, good, decent, great. Elite speed, elite strength. I'm confused how he has elite speed, but he was the 17th outside linebacker. I think I need a wide receiver more. Even if Sean Yates isn't as good of a prospect, I'm gonna take Sean Yates. 92 speed, 92 experience acceleration and he's six foot two he is a physical archetype wide receiver bald as hell at the age of 22 man but he's got hidden devs so we know he's either star or superstar 93 jumping that's a big boy he has a to c run block which is kind of hilarious although i guess it's positional right we also have round two pick five i wouldn't hate an offensive lineman i'm gonna take a right tackle matt sanford out of louisville 22 6 4 he has a pass block already and i like drafting o-line i really like to see how these guys progress 81 strength everything else obviously you can't really tell that is one hell of a face scan he looks like an alien he literally looks like an alien but listen i don't give a shit i don't give a shit if he's an alien i don't give a shit if he's a girl i don't give a shit if he's pansexual i don't even know what that means if he could block he's got a spot a stamina a pass block a to c impact block a to c pass block finesse his lead block is trash run pass block power run block finesse are all not good but a pass blocking tackle we'll see if he pays off i traded that third round pick so we go all the way down to the fourth round there's probably no value available here but we'll take a look anyway i'm gonna take this guard carter walters you usually can't find good guards this late 86 strength is actually impressive he's 23 normal dev my line like continues to just not be that good though so i think this is a decent pickup here i don't think i'm gonna get any linebacker that i'd use and that's probably our draft there i think our big pick obviously is sean yates i'm really hoping that tackle we got in the second round ends up panning out damn i wish i knew that sam howell was gonna play so well this year because i was kind of thinking in my head sam howell's not the guy so let's draft the quarterback but all of a sudden he became the guy and our scouting was kind of useless but let's get a recap on our rookies here the moment of truth sean yates Sean Yates is a 79 overall. Oh my God, he's a monster. You know, he's not as crazy as uh, Randy Stevenson. Matt Sanford seems to be a whiff. I'm not going to call it entirely a whiff, but he's a 73 overall. That was a pretty high pick in the second round. I was kind of hoping for a 74, 75. Let's take a look at his stats though. Sean Yates, actually, I take it back. Sean Yates has 87 spec. He's got 85 catching, 92 speed. Sean Yates is good. Sean Yates is real good. 93 jumping is actually fucking crazy. And then Sanford has 81 pass blocks, 78, 81. His run blocking is absolute dog, dog water. But I, that doesn't matter. Like, we are a passing team 100%. So, this was actually a very good pick. To have these base passing stats is really, really good. 83 impact block. Sanford's nice. Is he hidden dev also? He's also hidden dev. So I guess we'll find out. I assume he's star. Best case scenario though is Sean Yates is superstar already. If Sean Yates is superstar already, holy 
Holy shit! Whoa, 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 whoa! Am I am I supposed to be allowed to see that right now? Why did Sanford say hidden dev and Sean Yates? I can see superstar right now. Our first round draft picks have been spectacular. Sean Yates, 92 speed. He has his excel and short route boosted. I literally don't know why, but that's awesome. His traits are aggressive catch, fights for yards, covers ball on big hits. Personality is spontaneous. Oh, he's a fun guy. Let's go, Sean Yates. Lots of good wide receivers in this league, but Sean Yates could really make a big impact this year. Damn, let's go, Sean Yates. That actually ended up being a crazy good draft. I didn't see myself going in taking a wide receiver. He was just the best available for what I needed. Although I do wonder how that left outside linebacker that I passed on turned out. All right, the year is 2025. What prospects are on the board? Who's starting out strong? A corner out of Virginia Tech is first. Then there's Josh Cunningham, Deacon Pleasant, Tyler Stallings, Keenan Alexander, Hugh Walton, Greg Morris, Keenan Tate, Carl Carroll. I'm a little less worried about the draft this year because I do expect this to be the year where we genuinely go to the playoffs. Here's what the commanders look like going into week one. So so Sanford right now is at depth center. I'm actually going to move him to left guard. Let's see how good Sanford is at left guard. I did the same thing last year. I drafted a tackle. I moved him to guard and he's already been playing really, really well. So Sanford here, I'll move him to left guard. He is a 74, which is awesome. Andres Pete was on his way out. He's 32. So now Sanford's in at left guard. We got Stromberg who continues to develop and Gibson who we drafted is now an 81. Cosby's actually continued to be solid. I was kind of giving him shit, but he's been solid. And then Isaiah, when we got in free agency, he's getting a little older too. Sean Yates, already a superstar. I feel like I almost have to put in Yates over Jahan Dotson. I love Jahan Dotson, but Yates is younger and will develop faster. I got to give him his reps, you know? So I'll move him in the depth chart to wide receiver too, so that he gets as many reps as he can. Sam Howell's an 82. Robinson still hanging on. He's still with the squad. I appreciate that, but we have since lost Antonio Gibson. Kyle Pitts, a hard 99 overall. Disgusting. And then on defense, we have our full X-Factor D-line. Kendall Fuller, Eddie Jackson from free agency. Uh, Jamin Davis from free agency. Jack Campbell from our Montez Sweat trade. We lost some draft picks for that, but I think he's going to be really good this year. Cam Curl, we shelled out a lot of money for him, but I'm glad he's still here. And Emmanuel Forbes is still on his rookie deal. So... We're saving money there. Three X factors on defense is disgusting. All right, we're headed to mid-season of 2025. I don't expect this to be our Super Bowl season, but it, I just feel like it's possible with how good that defense is. I can't imagine there are many defenses in the league right now that are as good as our defense. We have a stud player at literally every position group. Three X-Factor D linemen, Jack Campbell in the linebackers, Cam Curl, Eddie Jackson, Kendall Fuller, Emmanuel Forbes. I just, it's such a good defense. Holy shit! New ability unlocked, breakout quarterback, Holy shit! We're six and one. It's our. This is our season. Game out swinging this year, boys. Sean Yates and Matt Sanford have gotten themselves an upgrade. I'm gonna give Yates a playmaker upgrade. He's already like he's already tall and has good speed and excel. So let's get him everything else. He also got even more excel from that. So that's beautiful. Sean Yates, could you go offensive rookie of the year? I gotta make sure I check the stats this season. I think I forgot to check the league stats last season. So I'm gonna make sure I check that. Sanford, we're always going pass pro. Dude, he literally looks like an alien. They did him so dirty. He has like a, a fetus growing out of the top of his head. He's eight months pregnant in his cranium. What are you going to name him, Sanford? We got a new ability for Chase Young because that means he hit 90 overall. No, he hit 90 fucking five overall. Oh my God, Chase Young! We can finally give him edge threat. He needs... 95 power rusher for edge threat elite. I don't think we can ever actually get that. I don't think it's possible for us to ever get that. So we'll just go no outsiders inside stuff, defensive rally and edge threat. It was worth paying Chase Young 18 million a year. I'll say that. It was very worth it. Uh, we have a breakout for our quarterback. I am praying. I am praying that he gets that. I really want Sam Howell to have it. We got some weekly awards as well. Kendall Fuller gets NFC Defensive Player of the Week with eight tackles and an interception. Let's see if we got any more. Sam Howell got it. He was the top player of week two with 200 passing yards, three touchdowns, 25 rushing yards, and a rushing touchdown. Great work. But that's it for our squad. So mid-season of 2025, we're six and one, having a really hot season. Sanford's already up to 77. So only Look at how much we've improved the offensive line. Stromberg was a rookie in year one. We drafted Sanford and Gibson, and we signed Isaiah Wynn. This is a serious upgrade to our O-line, which was previously like a 69 overall aggregate, and now we're like 79-80 aggregate. That's nuts. Yates is doing well. Oh, I need to move him in the depth chart. Ooh, I forgot to move Yates in the depth chart. Stevenson. 
and Chase Young must be going off. I gotta move Yates to wide receiver too. I'm sorry, Jahan Dotson, but this is the NFL, man. And if Yates is gonna progress faster than you, I have to give it to Yates. Solid season. Doesn't look like we're on pace for any awards other than potentially Sean, Sean Yates winning rookie of the year. All right, we're headed to the playoffs. We just gotta hope that Sam Howell got that breakout. If I go in and Sam Howell is a superstar, this actually very well could be our Super Bowl year right now. Dude, this exact same thing happened in the Texans where I thought I was clear of the playoffs. Look at this. We went 6-1 and one and proceeded to win two more games after that. But I'm telling you, the hardest part of this rebuild is the NFC East. Look at the NFC East standings. This is insane. We are 9-8, and eight, but the Eagles are 12-5. and five. The Giants are 12-5. and five. The Cowboys are 13-4. and four. Those are three of the best teams in the entire league and they're all in my division it's so funny too because three years ago we would all say the nfc east was the worst division in football i lost 42 to 0 to the eagles we didn't score a damn point we just gotta hope that sam howell got his breakout that'd be the only shining spot oh thank god this this literally is the saving grace i think if sam howell wasn't superstar i just i don't know how we get out of this division alive we are getting massacred it's i went nine and eight with this team sean yates is up to an 85 overall so that was the correct decision. Sean Yates is already the same overall as Jahan Dotson in his first year. So that's that's great. Um, O-line progressing super, super well. Isaiah Wynn might be out of here after this year. So maybe we're drafting a left tackle again. Like a no we're drafting another O-lineman. But dude, what is holding me back? The other teams in my division are just better. I'm not really getting an opportunity to get to the playoffs. We have to be so good that we make it past them. Recap in the 2025 season, the Baltimore Ravens beat the Falcons in the Super Bowl. Marcus Williams is Super Bowl MVP. Dak wins MVP of the league. Sean Yates wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. I think Sean Yates is Superstar X Factor now. So even though we somehow lose like eight of the nine last games of the season, which is so sad, we actually have a bright spot here. My only concern is we're about to lose some players in free agency. For sure. If Sean Yates got a dev trade upgrade, it didn't activate yet. So maybe he doesn't get a dev trade upgrade. He appears to still be superstar. That's okay, though. I mean, he's so young. This guy's going to be a damn 99 overall, like, relatively soon here. I'm giving him playmaker. Just want to see his stats go up. Awareness, ball carry vision, catching traffic, catching deep, juke, medium, short. Stud! I love you, Sean Yates. Oh, my God. Whoa! So Jack Campbell gets a dev trade upgrade. Cam Curl gets a dev trade upgrade. And yet, Sean Yates didn't get his. That's weird to me. But this ended up being a really good trade. Having Jack Campbell be a superstar is huge. I mean, that's such a good linebacker. It's just an incredible linebacker. I'm going to give him Crusher. And then mid zone KO is probably the move here, actually, since he will be in the mid. I'm going to keep him with mid zone KO. That is a really good linebacker. Same with Cam Curl. Cam Curl is a, a straight up 91. He should have four abilities, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to give Cam Curl. I guess I. I don't know what's good in like sim i'm gonna give him deep out zone ko deep in zone ko and pick artist and then i also got to give some abilities to sam howell damn what a bu like this was the best losing season ever though i'm gonna give you sideline dead eye no look dead eye i just want to have dead eyes and tight out so that he gets better catching from kyle pitts who he already throws to a lot and i do want to pop in and look at some of these rookies that we haven't looked in a while look at randy stevenson we can never forget that we drafted this guy man honestly like I, i'm almost in a position where i should trade randy stevenson or chase young and get just a ton of value out of them and just let the other wreak havoc because it, it like is it worth it having both of them i don't really know but randy stevenson 87 speed 97 finesse 89 acceleration 95 tackle this is one of the craziest draft picks i've ever done ever i think this is the saddest thing to me terry mclaurin regressing losing dev trade upgrades He's 30 years old. Ugh, that's weird. So through free agency, we retain pretty much everybody. Eddie Jackson has regressed to the point where Jartavius Martin is actually a better start at free safety. And I'm fine with that because he's younger and he'll continue to get better. The biggest thing this team needs, and we kind of needed it last year too, is an outside linebacker. And now we've got Meekins, who I drafted a long time ago. He hasn't progress super well so if i could draft like a star or a superstar outside linebacker that'd be really good here nothing i literally don't need anything else though for our absolutely average record of nine and eight we have an absolutely average pick of round one pick 16 keep in mind though i traded away my second and third round pick so it doesn't look like i'm gonna get both positions i want i'm pretty much gonna get one and i'll get a really shitty player in round four there's quarterback juan barrett whose projection is top five i have him 85 completed i just like i can't i have 
have Sam Howell. I'm going to take a tackle here. We have drafted a lot of offensive line, but it's honestly what this team needs. We're going to take Josh Mendoza here. He had the worst bench press reps, though. He's got 82 strength. He's a normal dev, though. We'll move no left tackle, but damn, Mendoza's not the guy we need here. And in round four here, I'm going to take a Hail Mary on a, uh, a linebacker. Sean Francois. You know what? 84 speed, 84 excel. 22 years old. He looks like a full grown man. That's actually not that bad. We're just going to see what overall he is. If he's a 74 overall, he's going to be way better than Meekins and he'll progress better too. Take a look at the recap of our draft. I really got to see these overalls. How bad? Did oh, wow. I fucking whiffed. A horrible draft for me here. I'm still going to start Mendoza over Isaiah Wynn. Isaiah Wynn is seven overalls higher, but Isaiah Wynn is 30. So I would just prefer to give Mendoza the reps because eventually, yes, he will get his way up to a higher overall. But damn, man. I'm simming in midseason. And if it's looking real bad at midseason, I think I'm going to trade one of our X Factor left ends. Hey, listen, I don't want <laughs> I don't want to get too excited about this. A five and two start. For the commanders who are now a 90 overall is amazing. But dude, I did this last time and we went on to lose so many games. We didn't make the playoffs. I couldn't believe it. Jahan Dotson finds himself getting an upgrade here. I'm going to give him playmaker. He definitely, he's definitely upset about the addition of Sean Yates. Come on, commanders. The year is 2026. We're a 90 overall. We have three X Factor D linemen. We got superstar Jack Campbell, superstar Cam Curl. We're going to the playoffs. Let's go, baby. The commanders finally, for the first time, make the playoffs with a 13 and four, an insanely good record. Cowboys match us with a 13 and four record. The Eagles and the Giants fell off a little bit this season, nine and eight and six and 11. But guess what? Last season, they were insane. So obviously their schedule was more difficult. First things first, we got to look at the players. Sam Howell, I want to see you in a big 9-0. I want to see it. I want to see it. Oh my God, he is literally a 90. 6-1. He's 25. We have, though, I got to say, we have put him in such a good position to win. We gave him Kyle Pitts. We gave him Sean Yates. We drafted so much O-line talent. We signed free agent O-linemen. We wanted Sam Howell to win bad. And you know what? Damn it, he did it. Crazy good throw power and accuracies. And he's got 85 speed, 88 XL. That's a really good quarterback. Somehow, Sean Yates keeps getting moved to wide receiver three, but I don't, it literally doesn't matter. He is a 90 overall. See what stats he gets here. Awareness, he gets so much. Sean Yates with a big upgrade. And I can actually give him manual abilities now. I'm going to give him, can't give him deep out of leap, but he does get acrobat. I'm going to give him bruiser just for fun. I'll also give him red zone threat. So if Sam Howell goes to him in the end zone, he's going to be making snags. Sean Yates proving to be an excellent draft pick. Mendoza. I, I mean, he's basically a bust. I reordered this guy in the game, unreordered him for me. I don't really understand that. But someone who's not a bust and that I would very much like to talk about was my second round pick. I picked Jake Gibson after Randy Stevenson. Randy Stevenson was round one, pick one. This is the first pick of the second round two years ago. Jake Gibson is insane. He's the number 11 ranked right guard in the league. He's in the top 4% of the league, and he's an 88 overall with 95 pass block power. Gotta say, though, his run block is still trash, but we're, we're not a run team. Stromberg has developed well, and Sanford's actually got himself another upgrade, and I'm actually gonna give him power because those run block stats are so bad, and he, he is a guard. Keep in mind, though, I can always move Sanford back to left tackle if I ever feel like that's important. Also, this is the playoffs. I should not be subbing in Mendoza. Um, so we're keeping Isaiah win. But look at that offensive line now. Offensive line is now averaging about, an, I'd say, 84 or 85 overall. Still got straight 99 Kyle Pitts. Before we go into this playoff game, I do want to take a look at him. Fucking insane how good Kyle Pitts is. He's a 99 in, in actually two categories, in possession and vertical threat. You can't teach 91 speed. You're just born with it. But you can teach 99 catching and medium and deep in it and catching traffic and spec catch. Unbelievable, Larry. He's the, the best tight end in the league right now. We're still very shallow at left outside linebacker. I've got old ass CJ Mosley doing his best. But Jack Campbell has gotten himself up to an 89. And now he's a 90 overall run stopper. Very happy with this trade. It makes me feel a lot better about my whiff of a draft this year. And Emmanuel Forbes has gotten an upgrade to Emmanuel Forbes is now a 92 overall corner. He's not superstar, but he 
is 92 man to man. All right, commanders, this is your Super Bowl lineup. I don't think it's going to get much better for you. I, I just realized that we got a buy in the wild card. So we actually go straight to the divisional championship here. Take it on the Chicago Bears. Oh my God, we're taking on the Chicago Bears. All right, commanders, your first run at the bowl. You get a buy in the wild card and you take on the Chicago Bears in the divisional. I'll play the moments. And if this is the first rebuild of mine you've ever watched, the way I do it, I'm going to let the sim run. And if I'm just getting shit on, I just have to take my L. But if this is a close game, I am allowed to step in and play a few of the moments. But I'm not allowed to, like, drastically impact the game. Walk them out. Look at the Chicago Bears. Justin Fields and Sam Howell. Oh, there's scary Terry McLaurin. I'm surprised it wasn't Sean Yates walking out there. And here's a nice clip of the ceiling. I hope everyone enjoys that. Okay. I'm not going to play these moments yet. Bears are on the board early. We stopped them. Oh, no. 10-0. Bears are really on the board early. I think the commanders will score here fourth and four we drill the field goal it's still 10 to 3 another field goal we drill that it's 6 to 10 bears are marching they don't score the commanders score big third down the bears score all right this is the exact type of game i want to take over in washington commanders we got home field advantage i'm gonna hand this off to the rookie i just feel like there's really good running lanes here he's got somebody on that d-line oh wait no never mind great run go for it Get that first. The computer took over, went for it on fourth and inches and got it, which is awesome. And now I just got to punch this in. I think Kyle Pitts or Sean Yates are both excellent options. Sean Yates torches his man. I don't want to say a sell, but a bit of a sell. Damn. Very, very big play here. Yates wide open. Oh. Oh my God, Sam Howell completely sells that throw. His feet were set. I led the pass to the outside and I just, sh I just shanked the kick. That meter was moving so much faster than I expected. I can't believe I forgot, but I never checked anything about our special teams unit. The Bears are now in scoring range. Second and two, it's play action. I tried to go, oh, get there. Justin Fields slides down in the fourth quarter. We got to hold him to a field goal here to force overtime. Third and one. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Massive, massive stop. They got to take this field goal. Bears drill their field goal. My field goal would have been oh so massive right now because I could win on this touchdown drive. Got to win the ball game right here, right now. It's first and 10. We've got the whole field to march, but we have some incredible players to throw to here. Let's see who clears. We're going to go. Oh, Cal Pitts honestly was not open, but that DB glitched out in man coverage on the running back. Oh, McLaurin absolutely torches his man. We're out of bounds. That's a huge connection. Great work, Sam Howell. Kyle Pitts clears with ease. Great work. We've got Tank. You should break this. Let's just, just read this pretty standard. There he is. There's Sean Yates. Great play, Sean Yates. Out of bounds, 17 seconds, all three timeouts. First and goal. I'm kind of just looking at Kyle Pitts here. There he is. Easy. Easy work and a great catch. Kyle Pitts. That's why he's the best tight end in the league right there, baby. Oh, oh my God. Holy shit. I thought that the Sim was going to kick a PAT and the Sim went for two and got it. Yo, this is where having the best D-line in the league kind of helps. I think we are going to fly on Justin Fields. I think he's in a lot of trouble. He is in a lot of trouble. Randy Stevenson. Oh my God. That's got to be one of the most horrifying things to see as an opposing quarterback. Those monsters coming at you. Same thing. Oh, I thought we were going to end the game right there. But not only does he catch it, he breaks the first tackle and gets out of bounds. One more time. Chase Young, Randy Stevenson. He throws low. He gets to the 49. This would be a monster kick. No, they're going Hail Mary again. He can't hit this kick. Thank God he can't hit this kick. Second and inches. Randy, get home. He checks down! Justin Fields checks down with the game on the line! Oh my god, there's no way. Take a look at the stats of this divisional playoff. Sam Howell, 106 QBR, definitely outplayed Justin Fields, who had three interceptions. Brian Robinson was 10 for 45, not bad. Receiving, Pitts 7 for 78. Dodson was 7 for 125. Yates was 4 for 64 and one touchdown. On to the NFC Championship! Kyle Pitts taking on his former team. They're 91 overall, very well-rounded with a 99 overall AJ Terrell. We've got a 95 offense, a 91 defense. We're 93 overall. And of course, we got a weekly award. I assume it goes to Sam Howell. No, it's Kendall Fuller again. Kendall Fuller has been amazing. Gotten multiple player of the week. He had two interceptions.
interceptions in that playoff game. So yeah, he has been a stud. All right, NFC Championship. We are one game away from the Super Bowl. Come on. Hey, we get a tutty there. Falcons get a tutty in return. We have another field goal. We shank another. Oh my God, this kicker is so bad. Falcons score another field goal. We make that one. 14 to 10. All right, I'm going to step in here. I'm looking for my boy Yates. He should be there, and he is. Yates powers through that first hit. I don't think that linebacker is sticking with Terry McLaurin. Oh, he got him. Stay. Got him. I got a guest pass. I just got to send these monsters at the QB, man. Go get him, boys. Go get him. Oh, I need more pass rush. All right, we're going to go get the quarterback here, dude. I got too many studs on that D-line to not be sacking the quarterback every play. Oh, slip screen. Throw it! Cam Curl! I batted it down. I tried to INT that. Cam Curl's over here. I'm on Jamin Davis! Oh, my God. Almost picked off his fourth and one. He's gotta, they got to tie it up with the field goal, right? Young Way Koo, don't, don't try anything fucking greasy, man. Drills the field goal. I just got to read this as it sets up. Oh, it's man coverage. You can't cover Kyle Pitts. 17 to 17. Fourth and four. Unable to convert. Dude, got sacked twice. Just go get him. Yep. Yep. TFL. I really don't know what they're going for here. He does? Bijan gets rocked. All right, we run commit one more time. If we get a big TFL, I'm not confident that Young Way Koo can hit this. He's good, though. I mean, obviously. Nice TFL. It's now a 58-yard field goal to win this game. Holy shit. Holy shit. Game on the line. He shanked it. Let's go. Starting with the ball in overtime. This is the playoffs. Even if I score, they'll get an opportunity. Damn, that was uh, that was spook. There's great defense to, uh, to push him back and make that a hard field goal, though. Honestly. There is not a soul open. I got to try and hand this ball off, man. They are keying on the pass, and it's just going nowhere. Second and 10, and what do you know? A spectacular run from the rookie. We were just sitting here getting bottled up left and right. First and 10, I think Pitts is pretty open. He is. Great catch, Pitts! We're going to no huddle this same run play. We're keeping them on. Ooh, yes! I don't know. Let's just read it. Oh, I had the running back, but I missed it. That's a great block on the edge. Go, Sam! Go, Sam! Sam Howell! Oh, my God. And is that ball game? It is! The commander's defense holds. Yo, got to give it up to the rookie running back, Hills. Desmond Ritter had a great game, but Sam Howell was just better. Eddie Hills had two carries for 22 yards. That's the kind of stat line we want out of you, buddy. Pitts, 8 for 115. Chanel, 8 for 138. Yates was 4 for 55. Jahan Dotson is 4 for 70. McLaurin, quiet, but he did have that big touchdown. Now it's the Super Bowl versus the Chiefs. I am interested to see if the Chiefs roster has been updated, but let me show you what the commanders are rocking with. 99 Chase Young, 99 Randy Stevenson, and 99 Kyle Pitts. We've also got Jonathan Allen, McLaurin, Cam Curl, Sam Howell, who's now boot Boosted to a 97, which is kind of insane. Forbes is a 96. Campbell's a 93. Campbell's an X-Factor. Holy shit. Jack Campbell is an X-Factor. I don't actually know. I've never seen this before. When they enter the zone, they can see offense and play art via coach cam. That is awesome. Doesn't really help you in sim, but it's kind of lit. All right, boys. Heading into the Super Bowl. Here are your Washington Commanders. Superstar X-Factor, Sam Howell. Ryan Robinson, McLaurin Dotson, and the stud, Sean Yates. Traded for Kyle Pitts. Beefed up that o-line through the draft and on defense we have x-factor jack campbell randy stevenson jonathan allen chase young superstar now kendall fuller and superstar emmanuel forbes this team is loaded cam curl regressed on his depth trade though he was superstar now star but i don't care it's lombardi time chiefs start the super bowl with a field goal we're marching we went for it on fourth we're in the red zone we score seven to three let's go chiefs score red zone i'm taking over what do we want sam how what do we like here? Oh, he's got him in the middle. Great throw. Get through him, Brian. Let's go. Sam Howell delivers an excellent throw off his back foot. It's 17 to 14. Chiefs respond with a score. We take over at the eight yard line. I'm rolling out. I see McLaurin. That's a hard throw. A scary one too. My boy's in. Sean Yates is in. We got a little Sean Yates here. He's got a big advantage on that DB. Oh, a huge advantage on that DB. I don't see them adjusting this play well enough. An excellent throw from Sam Howell. Crossbody dead eye. I'm going to send McLaurin across the middle. I have a feeling he can't keep up with him. Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts. Demon. Oh, he throws a mean stiff arm. Gets us down to the two. 
This might even be better. We don't want to give the Chiefs any time to score. Sam Howell's X Factor is activated. I bet you never heard. I bet you never thought you'd hear that sentence. Now we run the same thing, but hopefully we actually punch this in. Let's try it one more time. Save ourselves some clock. And damn, Chiefs are all over that. Oh my God. Omaha's insane. I think Kyle Pitts is open across the middle then. He should be. Yes, sir. And he hangs on. Kyle Pitts, red zone slants. He's so good for it. He always catches those tough balls. 21 to 17. Chiefs can't score with no time on that clock. And guess what? We take over in scoring position. I'm going play action here and I'm looking Pitts. He's got to have that route. Oh, he had it, but... Be smart, be smart, be smart. This is cover three, so we can throw underneath two pits. Oh, God, that X Factor is actually insane. We can eat some serious clock. Robinson's just going to attack the middle. Oh, Howell's got daylight. That's a touchdown, Sam Howell. Oh, let's go! Sam Howell dives in. Wow, excellent blocking on the left side of the line. So glad we upgraded that O-line. Chiefs get a field goal, make it 20 to 28. But we go empty on our next drive, and now we've got to stop Patrick Mahomes. Look at that D-line, man. I love this fucking D-line. Run the ball. Jonathan Allen will blow it up. Does he want halfback? Doesn't have it. Gonna go on the blitz here. Pacheco breaks it. Two-minute warning in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, and the Chiefs have it on fourth and inches. We can end this game right now. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's play action. What a play. What a diving stop. I think that was Emmanuel Forbes. They went in on Jartavius Martin, but it was number 13 who blew that play up. Oh, wait, it's fourth and inch. Oh, shit. I thought that was fourth down. Wait a minute. I think he's got to run this, right? Oh, no. It's a pass and I ran command. He dropped it. The Kansas City Chiefs just sold away the Super Bowl. Oh, my God. They listed it on eBay and sold it for dirt cheap. No way. Kyle Pitts activates his X Factor. I could throw Kyle Pitts damn near every play on that, on that cross drag. The Chiefs have to run a Tampa 2 or they'll never stop it. Look at that. Kyle Pitts once again. X Factor's lit up too if I wanted to get weird. The rookie, Eddie Hills, is in. Will Eddie Hills close out another game? Eddie Hills, no! Eddie Hills trips, it's third and four. Pitts would double me. End this ball game, buddy. End it! End it, Pitt! And that's all she wrote. The Washington Commanders are super. Look at this shit, double me. Snag. Oh my God, let's go! Sam Howell, Emmanuel Forbes, Kyle Pitts, Sean Yates, Jahan Dotson. Oh my God, can you believe it? Terry McLaurin, Brian Robinson, way to stick it out with this poverty franchise, man. This is our first playoff run, and it ends hoisting the Lombardi in Hard Rock Stadium. Look at Sam Howell. Sam Howell had 133.9 QBR and threw two touchdowns, 300 yards. Brian Robinson got a touchdown, but Pacheco, holy shit. I think, I, I think one mistake I made on this rebuild was not actually targeting a running back in the draft or doing really anything thing about Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson, his whole career with the Commanders was so mid. He averaged like three or four yards per carry a season, never did much. But look at what Pacheco did with the Chiefs. And keep in mind, we have the same playbook. I ran Chiefs playbook. Pacheco is an X-Factor demon. He had nine yards per carry, got a touchdown there. Uh, Mahomes even rushed one in. So I think if I had targeted a running back, this might've gone a little smoother, but we still played well. Chiefs second year wide receiver, Levi Langley, 10 for 103. Pitts, nine for 130. That was probably the best move we made. Either Pitts or Jack Campbell to me was the best we made and then stevenson was probably our best draft pick and now that the commanders can hoist the lombardi we see that the super bowl mvp was sam howell i'm so glad there was that year where we thought we were gonna get rid of him i'm glad we didn't pablo picasso wins defensive rookie of the year debo's offensive defensive is garrett arthur smith coach of the year and, and dak wins mvp again i don't know why in so many sims dak is the mvp like in a, an unreasonable unrealistic amount of sims dak is always mvp now the question is what kind of hands did we leave this team in I sim to next season, which means the computer did re-signing and free agency. What's the team looking like? Of course, we retained Sam Howell. Amazing work. We retained Kyle Pitts. We retained our entire O-line. In fact, we retained our entire team. Looks like we drafted a wide receiver. Jaden Butler, who's hidden dev with 87 speed, 87 acceleration. Honestly, this dude could be superstar X Factor. He's still going to suck ass. Jaden Butler is... Oh my God, he's actually a superstar. Looks like that's all we got as far as our draft looks. We actually retained the entire team. Legitimately didn't lose anybody. Commander's rebuild is complete. I hope you guys loved it. Please let me know what team you want to see next because I have thoroughly enjoyed doing this. This is actually so much fun. I love you boys. I'll see you in the next one.
Peace.